our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed he grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him nothing in his appearance that we should desire him he was despised and rejected by mankind a man of suffering and familiar with pain like one from whom people hide their faces he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions and was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray, each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Bye. 
Good evening. The last song, <clears throat> the chorus in that song, uh, where were you when all that I've hoped for, where were you when all that I've dreamed came crashing down in shambles around me? <clears throat> Maybe you've been there. Maybe you've been in that situation. Maybe you've had something go on in your life, a situation that you didn't expect, something you didn't expect to happen to you because you followed Jesus. Um, and you had every reason to shake your fist at God. Maybe you've been exactly in that situation where you've had every reason to shake your fist at God. I, I know I have. And for those of you who are old enough and maybe you've been there, you've shaken your fist at God and you've learned that that doesn't do it. That there's nothing in there that doesn't make that hell worse. You shake your fist at God. <clears throat> And you wonder where he's at? Tonight, I wanna to remember something that separates our faith from every other system. Um, in many world religions, there's plenty of uh, attempts at trying to figure out God and our relationship with how to navigate life and navigate the universe and the world we live in. And if there is a God and if there's many gods, and um, I, there's many things that separate Christianity from other religions. Tonight is one of the main reasons and it's that God came down and suffered also. That's different. The fact that God himself also came down and suffered. Um, about 13 years ago, I went through um, a pretty tough year. I think we've all had some of those, maybe tough short season, a tough month, a tough week, um, a tough year for us. Uh, we lost my mother to cancer. Uh, it was a very short diagnosis. She got diagnosed with ovarian cancer and three months away, three months later, she passed away roughly. A few months later, my aunt passed away of lung cancer never smoked a day in her life. And then a few months later, um, my three-month-old nephew, healthy baby, uh, passed away in his crib to SIDS. Just a blanket rolled over on his stomach, and that was that. Um, there are people on the stage that have gone through things. There are people in this room that have gone through things. Um, and tonight, I, I just, I can't emphasize and stress this enough. There's something different about Christianity. There's something different about having Jesus. You see, for us, we had the pain of, of losing family members, uh, unfortunately. I've gone through other things since then. That was a long time ago. Um, but the pain is not eternal. That pain is not ultimate. That pain is not as deep as it could be. Uh, one of the things for us, for, for our family, for me personally, I'll say that that has helped my faith journey. And it's different for everybody. God's, God gives all of us a different sort of set of circumstances to kind of navigate your own faith and live out your own faith. Um, for me, uh, one of the things that we have, that, that I've, I've had is exposure to kind of the rest of the world. Whether or not you know it, America is the rest of the world. <laughs> We're the minority in a lot of ways, in a very amazing way. Um, but for us, my, my, um, my family, kind of a family business, more or less, uh, we've run orphanages in India. My dad has done that for over 20 years. We shared a little story about it um, probably a year or two, two years ago. Uh, my dad actually went to jail, um, was, was um, put in jail for baptizing people, for um, converting people in India away from Hinduism. So if you 
you, it's not illegal to be a Christian, but it is illegal to become a Christian. So they went and they found him. They, they put him in jail. They've been after him for a long time. Like kind of the true uh, picture of persecution. And uh, we went and visited him in, in jail. It's, we had to bribe the guards with Johnny Walker. I said, I'm dead serious. We bribed the guards with Johnny Walker. They got Johnny Walker red, all right? It's the bottom shelf. If you know what that, if you're laughing at that joke, you probably shouldn't be drinking that much. If you know the difference between double black and black and red, yeah. Uh, we'll pray for you at the end of the service. Um, but yeah, we, 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 brought, we brought Johnny Walker on a plane to go bribe the guards uh, in India to let us in to go see my dad. But uh, one of the things that uh, we've done is, is uh, run orphanages. And there's this one story I'll never forget um, that has stuck with me. It's um, shaped the way I kind of perceive faith and perceive all kinds of things. And it's, it's uh, bothered me. Um, a lot, if I'm honest. Um, so we, we have about 35 orphanages up and down the east coast, southeast coast of India, um, and there's about 100 to 150, 200 kids per home. So they're, they're, you know, boys' rooms, girls' rooms. It's a whole, it's a whole setup. It's a whole thing, um, and they're overtly Christian, which is against what the Hindus want in India. That's just kind of how they they run that country. And uh, they're constantly after these orphanages to be shut down, constantly after them just because they don't want them to be Christians there. And um, this one little, there's a little girl and a little boy. The girl was five-ish. The boy was three, young, young. And um, a couple of college students who usually walk to school, they found them lying on the side of the street, which is not a terribly uncommon situation in India. Um, they're lying in the dirt, in the mud, on the street. And they notice for a couple of days that these same kids are there. They start to beg. And so they, they, bring them to the orphanage. And uh, the story is um, the, there was a mom and dad who had the, had the kids. The mother died of, an, of um, well, the, the mother spoke back to the father. And in this region, this, this type of Hinduism, it is legal to kill the mom if she speaks back. He actually knocked her out, tied her to a stake and lit her on fire in the home, made the kids watch. He remarried another woman, and the woman was afraid that that girl, uh, that, that the, the husband was going to love the kids more than he would love her. So they kicked the kids out, and the kids are just on the street. And this is actually a normal practice. The police know about this. This is kind of just a thing that happens. And it gets crazier. These, so these kids come to the orphanage. The, the college kids bring them, and they're there, and we're looking at their paperwork, and I'm standing there. Um, and I'm with my dad and we're looking at their paperwork and this orphanage is completely full. And if he takes them in, um, they are at high risk of the entire orphanage being shut down. So we don't take them in. I haven't, I haven't quite known what to do <clears throat> with that for a, for a long time. Um, they're on the brink of, in their earthly realm, salvation, and I don't know where God is um, at that time. And maybe, um, maybe that's not a, maybe you're not uh, equipped, <laughs> maybe you've not uh, had access to that level of suffering in your life. I think here in the States, we're so, uh, that, that level of suffering is so distant for, for us. We have so many systems in place uh, to keep us from suffering at all. We have an FDA and an FAA and a, and a CDC, and you can go to your local grocery store and you can not worry that um, that vegetable you buy is going to kill you. That's such an, it's an amazing new thing. We just, we're so far from suffering on that level um, that it's hard for us to even uh, approach the topic of suffering. And yet some of you in here know that's not entirely true because you have suffered. You've gone through things. You've gone through difficult divorces. You've gone through cancer. You've gone through whatever, some things you brought on yourselves. And I'm gonna make the case that God also entered that with us. Um, I have this rope here, and if you will for a second. Imagine this rope extends and goes out the door, goes down across the street, down to the 77, down to the 287, keeps going, it goes to Ennis. 
It's still going. It stops by Bucky's on the way out for $85 in snacks. Still going, right? Goes to Destin for a little bit of a good time. All right, and now we're in the ocean. We're in Florida. We're off, and it's still going, okay? That's this rope. Picture that. This, this is this rope. I want you to imagine for a second. I'm, I'm going to draw... I'm gonna draw the lifespan of my little nephew we don't have with us anymore. About eight months ago, we lost my 95-year-old grandfather. I'm gonna draw his lifespan. Can you see the difference? I'm gonna answer that question, no, you can't. (laughs) This is eternity. If this rope stretches all the way out the building and across and down and it keeps going, that's eternity. And in the scheme of things, this is your life. I'm actually making this mark really wide (laughs) to exaggerate it. It wouldn't be this big on this rope in the scheme of eternity. And I wanna make a case tonight What is so special is that God joined us here. I'm gonna rip off this little gaff tape. You can see my little mark. God joined us here. He did not have to. This is where God was. This is what God has made for us. But he joined us here. And in here are all the things. In here are those little orphan kids that I don't have an answer for. Trying to understand that is like your dog trying to understand an iPhone. I don't know if my dog is so dumb. There's no way. I don't understand, but what I do know is that God joined us here, and if that was not enough, if that was not enough, he also said in 2 Corinthians, he comforts us here. Not only did he join us here, he comforts us in our own suffering, the father of compassion, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort any of those in any trouble they have through the comfort we receive through Christ. Just as we share abundantly in his suffering, so also does our comfort abound in Christ Jesus, 2 Corinthians 1. Not only did he come down and join us in this little black mark He comforts us here. If that wasn't enough, he also said and promised he was going to redeem it. He was gonna redeem this thing. Romans 8, 28, God is at work in all things. All things are gonna work together for the good of those who love him and are called according according to his purpose. Another translation says, God is at work in all things. Somehow, I don't understand how, not only is he here with us, not only did he do it with us, he's comforting us, He's going to redeem it. And if that was not enough, the ultimate triumph is that all evil essentially will be good. He descended into death itself and defeated it. If we do not have tonight, we don't have the rest of this rope. And I want you to have that perspective. You have your little black mark and I get it. In there, that's the cancer. That's that marriage that fell apart. That's that business deal that went sideways. That's that business partner that stole from you. That's that dad who left you. That's your childhood innocence that was taken away. All in that black mark and God joins us there. He comforts us, he leads us. He showed us how to suffer himself because he also suffered, suffered, but he did not have to. But because he did that, we have the rest of this rope. And it doesn't end. That is why tonight is Good Friday.
The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And there's a scripture passage in, in Hebrews uh, Hebrews 4, um, verse 12, and it mentions um, the word of God being alive. It's alive and living and active. Um, and one of the things I love about that is I, I think there is, you, you can take a sense that the word of God is, is alive in and of itself, but I, one of the, the factors I love about it is it's, it's alive because of those of us who partake in it are living it out. It is alive in speaking, it speaks to us, but I firmly believe it is fully alive when those of us who don't just read it also partake in it and are living it out. It's alive in you and that makes this word alive. And so tonight we're gonna partake um, in communion. And uh, in that passage, one of, the, one of the words that stands out is do this in remembrance of me as we remember. If you've never taken communion, that is sort of the point is to remember Christ and um, I think one thing to consider is the, the that word remember. Um, it, it is, I think it's more than just using our mind to recall something. There's a recalling, but the opposite of remember is to dismember. Those of us in the medical, anybody in the medical community, you know what that, exactly what that means. If something's dismembered, it is not attached anymore. And so to remember is to reattach yourself and to re-graft. And so our, our job tonight is to regraft ourselves with Christ, just like he regrafted us with community. 
that passage we read, um, the Last Supper passage exists in all the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, but that one is out of First Corinthians. And I, and I love that take on it is because that's, that, that's the first time that uh, retelling of Jesus at the Last Supper is told in a church context. That is for the church. And that's what we are tonight. Uh, we're gonna take communion here tonight. We've got tables around and I'll kind of lead us through that. Uh, but as we go, um, as, we, as we participate in communion and you kind of take that, uh, I'm gonna challenge you to re-graft yourself with the sacrifice of Christ. A sacrifice that he made, but to re-graft yourself mentally with what it means to sacrifice. I think there, there's a notion in, in the gospel um, that even just as a story, even just as a, as a narrative, the story of Jesus fills all corners of storytelling. It fills every edge of storytelling. And just even in that sacrifice, you know, those of us, you're an adult, you've, you sacrifice a thousand times a day, whether you not, you know it. You're gonna give up that meal or that extra drink so you don't get a DUI. <laughs> you're gonna sacrifice saying that thing to your spouse that you know you should because you wanna sleep in the bed and not on the couch tonight. You make a million sacrifices, tiny little sacrifices. Well, the sacrifice that Jesus made was the biggest sacrifice. He gave up what? Everything. For what? Everything. For who? Everybody. For how long? Forever. It, it is literally the entire box of sacrifice. He gave up everything. He was God. He came down, became man, and then gave it all up, lived a sin-free life, was betrayed by his friends, given up, and, and uh, exchanged for a known murderer and rapist. He gave up everything, and it wasn't just for something small. It was for eternity with God in heaven, which is the best possible place to be for how long? Forever. And so if you re yourself tonight, I want you to reconsider what it looks like for you to re-consecrate yourself and to attach yourself with that notion of sacrifice. So as you're taking tonight, ask yourself the one question, what could I sacrifice that would help my community? And by community, you can define that however you want. That's maybe just your home, your spouse, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your kids, your church community, your work community. And I actually fully believe if you, while you are taking communion and contemplating on it and thinking on it and regrafting yourself with Christ in sacrifice, I believe if you ask, what is one thing I should be sacrificing for my community, you will get an answer. I believe that. I believe you will get an answer. And some of you are sitting here right now, you actually know. You know exactly what it is. But as you do that, remember, recall, but re-graft yourself with Christ. And so we've got a few stations all around. There's a few tables up here. There's a couple in the back. You're gonna have to kind of find it. It's gonna be a little bit messy, but that's part of what we're doing tonight is it's a little bit messy. It's the body of Christ. And so um, I'm not gonna lead us through it. I'm not gonna have you go take uh, the cup and sit and I'm gonna read through it. I think just on your own time, go grab a cup and there's a little pop, the bottom pops off with the bread in there and just pray and ask God, what's one thing I should be sacrificing as you take communion? So go ahead and take the next few minutes and take communion.
a stranger in a foreign land passing through when will I be home again you remind me nothing here is permanent but your word and your faithfulness I was hungry I was thirsty
It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgression of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked, and with the rich in in his death, though he had done no violence nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By this knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death, and was numbered with the transgressors, for he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors.
As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, after three days, I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he has been raised from the dead this last deception will be worse than the first. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. If you will, please stand to your feet. As you go out into the world this night, don't rush ahead into the events of the coming days. Allow yourself to sit in Christ's suffering, not only as penance for us, but as an example of how to handle it should life hand you your own cross, as it inevitably will. Allow yourself to sit in Christ's sacrifice, not only as the ultimate gift from God, but as the only way to truly live through sacrifice. Remember him in spirit, Regraft yourself with him in practice. This Friday is good because we have a God who suffered and descended into death itself. We'll see you tomorrow.